The SpongeBob SquarePants movie game released a year after the previously acclaimed platformer Battle for Bikini Bottom. While BFEB's critical rating wasn't anything special, players quickly fell in love with this game, and eventually it would see its own remake nearly 20 years later. While the movie game is mostly more of the same, same engine, platforming, power-ups, what it does different is both enjoying and difficult to swallow. Today, we're going to be taking a look at three points I hear most often regarding the SpongeBob SquarePants movie game, and see if they hold up. Enjoy. The unanimous consensus with the game is as followed. It's a sequel to Battle for Bikini Bottom, it's another great platformer, and it's not as good as Battle for Bikini Bottom, but almost. These three points are brought up constantly by nostalgic players and Spongebob enthusiasts alike. The whole sequel thing is easy to be tricked into believing. I mean, the games look identical, though movie game is noticeably uglier and less polished in a lot of places, like the infamous level 1 truck. Nice. Very nice. That's not to say the whole game looks ugly, however. I do like how some levels look. The Goofy Goobers ice cream party boat looks pretty nice, and some of the driving levels are pretty eye-catching. The main problem comes through playing some of the game's darker levels. Shale City Dead Ahead and Now That We're Men are some of the longer levels, and if you aren't playing on Xbox, well, it's pretty much on par with Kelp Forest in the previous game. In terms of platforming, it's the game's main focus. 3,000 Miles to Shell City is a level that does a great job introducing you to the real platforming of the game, and Planktopolis is a brutal level near the very end of the game that does a great job testing what you've learned. To break up the platforming in this game, there are many mini-games you can do throughout the areas. We've got combat arenas, which are pretty fun, but challenging, Spongeball arenas, and I'm happy to report that Spongeball controls way better than it did in BFPV, and finally, the floating block challenges. These break out the platforming and the objective of trying to get to the next level with fun challenges. This game is a lot more linear than battle. It is mandatory to reach the very end of each level. While in battle, it had much more freedom of where you went and where you didn't go and how you finished the game. Though I will say, people bring up that battle's levels are a lot less linear and I'm just gonna have to disagree. It's pretty much the same as this game. Think of the levels as a straight line and you do things along the way. The level designs are the exact same but the way you go about completing the game is drastically different. After certain levels, Mindy lets you know if you need more Goofy Goober tokens to unlock a new move so you're able to complete the next level. Uh, this makes backtracking a, a requirement in this game, and in BFVB it was just kind of a thing you could or couldn't do depending on how many spatulas you had. And this is where a hefty amount of the criticism lies within this game. Most of the game's tokens you have yet to get are these extra slide tokens. Going down them the first time lets you progress to the next level. The next time you choose to go down, you're trying to beat it in a certain amount of time. And then the following is a ring challenge, and we will get into those later. Then a fourth time with a faster time trial. Four times down the same slide. Going back to battle, the most of the game asked you was to go down at once, or maybe twice in a handful of situations, most notably the Flounder Hill and Sand Mountain slides. But four times is just ridiculous. It's padding to the max. All the driving levels have these now, these token gimmicks. It makes the once fun backtracking in battle a chore to do. It also makes the game feel so padded, and padding isn't a bad thing when it's done right, but this is just not the way to go about it at all. Something Battle for Bikini Bottom doesn't have are the combat arenas, Spongeball arenas, and floating block challenges. The combat arenas are probably my favorite of the three. The combat in this game has been given a bit of a facelift. The bowling move can now detonate when upgraded. Oh, yeah, you can upgrade moves in this game too. A lot cooler than paying clams, that's for sure. Anyways, the combat arenas, they constantly get harder as you go, spawning more and more enemies, and they are quite a challenge at times. As a kid, I loved both this game and Battle for Bikini Bottom, but I always knew that this game was much harder, and it still is. Next are the Spongeball arenas. Like I said before, the Spongeball control is a lot better, so these Spongeball arenas are pretty fun to roll around in, and the later ones get pretty challenging as well. Lastly, the floating block challenges. These are fine. I never really found myself wanting to do these as much as the other two. They're just too long, and I feel like I'm on autopilot the entire time. Like, yeah, there's a timer, but who really cares? They give you more than enough time, and there's plenty of checkpoints. And plus, Patrick isn't as fun to control as Spongebob, and for platforming like this, I just wish I wasn't playing him. Inside the actual levels, we also have these Sonic Guitar challenges that only Spongebob can do, and these are some of the most unfair tokens in the entire game. 
Like the driving and sliding ring challenges, they only show the upcoming ring, making these challenges extremely focused on trial and error. Now, that wouldn't be a problem. Some of my favorite games are built around trial and error, learning from your past mistakes and improving each time you fail. You get another chance and eventually overcome the challenge. It does not work in this game though, because the challenges are simply too long. They can go on for multiple minutes. While I find myself not doing too bad with most of the sliding ring challenges, these Sonic Guitar challenges are absolutely brutal. The infamous Dark Tunnel and Goofy Goober levels and the awful Shell City ring challenges are some of the worst tokens in the whole game. And it's a bummer because I find the actual levels where you go from point A to point B very fun challenges, and these challenges really don't feel good at all. They're not fun to play. They don't break up the platforming in a, in a good way. And while they are technically optional depending on which tokens you do and don't get, you'll have to do at least a few of these ring challenges just to complete the game. Saying this game is not as good as Battle for Bikini Bottom, but almost, is, in my opinion, a fair opinion that many people, including myself, hold. While my stance on that has faded over time, I think the game is at least worth completing once. The soundtrack of the game is solid for the most part. I find soundtracks in games to be a very important aspect, so I'm glad they got that nailed. But in terms of completing the game, I wouldn't blame anyone if they got the minimum amount of tokens required and just finished the game. The thought of getting all tokens and going through all these rings is just such a rough idea. The way BFBB handled completion was a lot more reasonable. I forgot to mention this game also has chests you can find. They give SpongeBob and Patrick some cosmetics. It's cool. Some other goodies are thrown in there. It's nice to have around. And I also really like what they did with the manliness weights in this game. I, I do really like that. I can't say, if you like Battle for Bikini Bottom, you're nearly bound to enjoy this one, just maybe not as much. Thanks for watching my video on the movie game, my first ever video on movie game. Uh, recently I've been reading a lot and watching some new movies and working a little less at Subway. However, I do uh, want to release a video on the LEGO NES sometime before the next Saturday morning upload. Um, I'm kind of trying to do two videos a week and um, of course Saturday morning is the normal sponge video but you know in between I want to do some different ones like my unboxing video I did and then the LEGO NES set. Um, I wouldn't expect two videos every week. Two videos are kind of just, think of the second video as a bonus pretty much because they're kind of thrown together. Like, of course, they're not going to be bad. They're going to be, they're going to take a lot less time to make. Um, but yeah, they'll still be good. So yeah, um, I think I get it on the 11th, so I'll probably have the video up by the 13th. I really like building Legos. <laughs> so yeah, be on the lookout for that, and I'll see you guys um, on that one and then next Saturday morning. Uh, that'll do it. Peace.